Hey guys, today we're going to show you how to check a blown fuse. What is a fuse? Well, a fuse is a connection that goes in your circuit that is designed to break if the circuit gets overloaded or if there's a short. This is there for safety. By putting in a proper fuse, this still helps not eliminate, but reduce the chance of having any major damage in your vehicle. So don't think just because you have a fuse, you're 100% safe, but they are necessary. In a 12 volt application, you might find a variety of fuses in the vehicle, depending if it's aftermarket or factory. So over here, we can see a bunch of factory style fuses, and over on this side, we have aftermarket. So these cylinder style fuses, you typically see in older vehicles. They are no longer used anymore from the factory. You will, however, find some wiring kits like to use these AGU fuses. I'm not a big fan of them because typically what happens is on an amplifier install, the, the middle part that's supposed to break won't actually break. If this gets hot, there's actually glue that holds the side cylinders on to the middle piece, and the glue will typically get undone. That's why I find this is a very inferior design, but it's still acceptable in some applications. Over here we have in the middle our factor style fuses. Now they come in different varieties. Now typically we just have these standard blades, or AT, there's also known as HCC and ATM. Yes, they have dirty names because over here we have the ANL, ANL, ah. not. So you don't have to know the terminology. Typically, you can just take your blown fuse, go to your automotive store, and they will provide you the correct fuse. But you can see here that there's different heights and profiles. Even though the, the sides are the same spacing, you want to make sure you put the proper fuse in into your vehicle and you don't just mix, mix and match. And always put in the proper amperage. It is not safe practice if you've blown a 10 amp fuse to place in a 15 or a 20 amp fuse because now that fuse can't do its job. That circuit's rated for 10 amps, they put a 10 amp fuse in there for a reason. You put a higher rated fuse in, it will not actually blow if there's a short, you could cause a fire. On this side, you can see here, these are typically fuses you'd see on an amp install, for example, because amps draw a lot of amperage. They draw a lot of amperage because the voltage is only 12 volts. Now over here we have the mini ANL and the standard size. I prefer the mini ANL because it just fits better. Okay, I'm waiting for your comments right now. Go ahead and post. Okay, moving on to the circuit breaker. This is my favorite style to go in. They are rated differently depending on the application, but what I like is if there's a short, what happens is it, it'll open up the circuit. You can go ahead and find your problem, fix it, and place it in again. Much more serviceable, looks good, and it works very well. The problem with these are is you have to you have to uninstall them, you have to open up your fuse holder and replace them and put it back. This is very quick, but it costs a lot more. Today we're going to be focusing on checking factory style fuses because there's so many in a vehicle and at some point you guys are probably going to blow a fuse for whatever reason. A lot of the reasons fuses blow on your radio is typically because they share circuits with other devices like your cigarette lighter or power adapter. What I see a lot happen in the shop is someone drops some change in them and the center pin and the outside shield touches on the coin and then it blow and it pops the fuse. Very common to happen or if after a vehicle has been jump started, a fuse could be popped if it wasn't jump started properly. So today we're going to be going over a couple techniques. I'm also going to show you how to check fuses with several devices, a test light, a multimeter, and a little bit more of an advanced test light. Some of you may say, can I, I can just pop out the fuse and check it. Yes, you can remove the panel, check the legend, and target that fuse. However, like I said, sometimes some devices overlap on the same circuit and you don't want to pull out every single fuse and then sometimes some fuses aren't, they're not full in the fuse panel, so you might put it back in the wrong spot. So this way is a quick and easy way to check with the fuse already still in the fuse panel. Now the first thing that we're going to do before we can check the fuses is we have to locate where the fuses are. Now what I would recommend is if you're not familiar with your vehicle, Head straight to the index of your owner's manual and find the section for fuses. It will give you the areas of where the fuses are located. Now typically they're going to be on the sides of the dash or underneath the driver's kick or on the passenger side. There's also going to be a fuse panel underneath the hood as well. Hondas are notorious for popping their fuses under the hood on those, on those 90s vehicles. I've also seen fuse panels underneath the seats and also in the rear of the vehicle. So you really want to check your owner's manual to make your life a lot easier. For our first test, we're going to be showing you how to do this with a standard test light. Now, typically what it is, is just a LED light nowadays. It used to be with an incandescent bulb, but most of the ones you're going to buy are going to have an LED light, and it has to hook up to a ground source somewhere. Now, to use this test light, we have to turn on the ignition. 
So to begin our test, the first thing we do is we're going to turn the ignition on but have the motor off. Now the reason we're doing this is because we need to power up the circuits in order to test them. Okay, let's show you what it looks like. So I have the circuit powered up. I've decided which one I'm going to test and we're going to go right here. So when you put your test light on, it'll show up red. Now the downside to a test light is, depending on what kind you have, if you have the ones that go in the OBD2 that have a red and a green light, it'll show you positive and negative. Now if I turn off the ignition, you can see that the light goes, goes dead. There's nothing here. Here's the downside to using a test light is, if it's ground, you don't have a complete circuit, you can't fire up that light. So you actually don't know, it's hard to tell if, you're, if your fuse is actually making a connection at all. Maybe you have a bad connector, and the fuse can't make any connection with the wire. It's kind of hard to tell at that point because you can't see any continuity going on in here. Okay, now we're going to do our test. Now this test will apply for the power probe and for the test light, while you'll see a different style on the multimeter. Now you see on the purple one, I pick purple because they're easy to pop, and you can differentiate because there are no purple fuses in here. So you see there's two sides to the fuse. So I'm going to go on this side over here. You can see my light. It's turning on when I push it in. Now when I go to the other side, you'll see nothing because I have intentionally popped the fuse. Now my problem is when people put fuse holders in, sometimes they'll do these little prongs that stick out and they'll just shove it in with the fuse. One side of the fuse is always hooked up to either a switch to, uh, 12 volts or a constant. The other side is the link that actually blows on the circuit. What people think is if I just put a little prong on one side, well, if the fuse pops, then I'm safe. The problem is you don't know which side is designed to pop unless you pull out the fuse and test it, which is your hot side and which is the device side. This is where I see a lot of people make potential haz fire hazards. So you can see how to test it is. You go on one side, okay, 12 volts. The other side shows nothing. Like I said again though, the problem with the test light is you don't know if it's a connection issue or if it's actually blown because we actually don't know if we're connected. I'm going to show you what the difference is with the power probe. Okay, now we're going to hook up our power probe. Typically with the power probe, we hook it up to the battery. This is how the device works and we're going to get the best reading because we're hooked up on the main part of where the circuits get all their powers on the battery. They also have adapters which you can switch them out and hook up to the power adapter inside the vehicle if you have to. With the power probe, it's kind of in between a test light and a multimeter. So I just call them like an advanced test light because it doesn't do everything a multimeter does, but it's a lot simpler for most users. For people that do a lot of 12 volt and diagnostics, it's a good tool to have in your arsenal. It's not going to replace tools, but it will help speed things up. Now the difference though the power probe compared to the test light is, unless you have a, an advanced test light like I was speaking of before, is it has the ability to show ground and 12 volts. So you see here when I touch a good ground source, I get zero on my display and a green light. Now if I go on to the fuse, I'll just get zero. It's not a strong of a ground, but it is indicating to me because it's showing zero, that is ground. What happens though when I turn on the ignition? Same fuse. I now show a reading on the fuse with the ignition on, which is what we showed on the test light before. But now the difference is, let's put in the blown fuse now. Okay, we now have our power probe plugged in, so let's see what it looks like on the blown fuse. Now with the ignition off, you see I show zero. Which indicates to me that we have a connection. Now let's try with the ignition on. So ignition on, so still one side, we can show voltage, but now on the other side, well it's still showing zero, which means we have a break in the line because the device side is resting at ground because it's waiting for power, but it can't have it because the fuse is blown, but on the other side, we have 12 volts, which is proving to show that if you have a fuse in line, if you put a connector in just by using the fuse, if you pick the wrong side, you would still be hot, defeating the purpose. That's why we have to use proper fuse holders. 
Okay, now I'm gonna show you how to do this with a multimeter. This is probably the most attainable way for you guys because most of you have a multimeter at home and they're cheap compared to the other tools that I showed you and they can do more. So it's like, why wouldn't you do it this way? So for this test, all we have to do, well, there's two ways we could actually do it. We could put it on DC 20 and then we can hook up one end to ground and then we can hook and then do it how, and then pretty much use the multimeter like how we used the power probe and the test light. We would just go with one prong and look for 12 volts. So that's one way you could do it. Uh, it's a little bit cumbersome because you have one hand trying to touch ground and then the other hand you're using a prong. So you could devise an alligator clip to go onto the ground and use a really long clip and then hook it to the negative terminal. That would be the best way to do it. But if you want to do a shorter version, you can hook up to metal inside the cab. Now, typically how I test with a multimeter though is I do a continuity test. Now, there's a reason why I do this because on a Ford Ranger, for example, if you blew the fuse that's attached to the clutch, when you turn it on, if you're using a test light, what's going to show is it's still going to show 12 volts on both sides of the fuse because the circuit still gets power somewhere else for the switch. So it's going to mislead you thinking the fuse is intact. This is where you really have to do a continuity test. However, I have also done continuity tests where for some reason the circuit's still complete on the device side, but the fuse is still blown. I think that happened to me once. I can't remember the situation. So really the best thing to do is if you only have one tool, which is the multimeter, is to do a full continuity test. If you still can't find a blown fuse, switch over to DC20, hook up to ground, and look for 12 volts. Th that way you know you're testing both ways. Now, the most thorough way, I guess, would be to unplug every fuse, but we don't like doing that because that's super time consuming. So with the multimeter, the one thing is you want a multimeter that makes a beeping sound. This could be a lot easier. So when you, make, when you have a connection, it will beep. Now, why do I want that? Because when you're crouched in a car, this is a cumbersome way because you need two hands to do it because you have to put each prong on each side and you don't want to be looking over, kinking your neck, trying to look for, hey, do I have continuity or not? If you have the beeping sound, you don't even have to look at the multimeter. Now, this is the downside to doing this type of connection is because you need two hands to do it and using it the other way, it's a lot easier to get in here. So this is the only downfall that I can see about testing this way. But you can see if I go here on this fuse, it makes a beeping noise, which means I have continuity, which means that fuse is okay in theory. As you can see, we have our sacrificial fuse back in over here on the purple. And when I do a continuity test, well, I expect nothing to happen because I know it's blown. But when we move over to the next fuse and the next one, you get a noise so you know it's okay. Well guys, there you have it. Three quick and easy ways to check fuses. Pick and choose which way you want. I recommend to do the multimeter if you're gonna pick any of them, but I actually use the power probe and the multimeter in my shop if you wanna know how we do it here. To see what else we're up to, check out my Instagram and Facebook, AnthonyJ350, and check out our website at www.gofasthavefun.ca.